Hey everybody, Susie Quillen at Perfectly Naughty today. Um, so I got a message that the last video I recorded, the video or the, uh, excuse me, the audio quality was not very good. And I apologize for that. Um, I, I got a new computer and I last time was using my um, microphone headset and it might not have been a compatible tool. So I'm trying it again with just the basic microphone in the machine. We're going to see if that works any better. Um, so, you know, if you want to let me know or you can email me later or something and let me know if it's better than the previous one. So, um so thank you for popping in if you're in here live today. I am trying to be a little bit more consistent with getting in here and sharing some information to encourage you in your stitching life. Um, we've got a lot of fun things coming up um, as we move um, into the fourth quarter of the year. That's pretty amazing. And I've just got stuff that I'm, I'm excited about it. So, but today we are going to talk about llama yarn. Llama is one of my personal favorite um, yarn fibers. And when I talk to people about my allergies with certain animal fibers being um, sheep wool and mohair are top of the list allergens for me and um, cashmere is also on my list um, I have been able to use um, a hundred percent bunny angora when I can find it but it's unless you know a breeder and you can get it um, it's most of the time commercially mixed with um, with merino and um, that does not work out so well for me so since it's something that's harder, I don't bother with it here in the shop because it's just too, the capital overhead for that is too much. But today we're going to talk about llama. I love llama yarn. I really, really do. Have some really great properties. And in the description for this is the link to the blog, a blog post that I wrote that just have some more thoughts. We're not going to do a super deep technical dive into this. This is just something to kind of get your mind thinking about some things. And, and as you ask me questions, either here in the live stream or later, we could build on this and we can add some more information to this. Um, as I shared in the blog post, llama has a higher thermal value than sheep's wool. Um, sheep wool is very common. It's a fabulous fiber. It's very resilient. It takes color beautifully and it does a lot of really great things. So I'm please know that I am not anti any kind of fiber. My skin just breaks out in a rash and that's not lovely. So, uh, but llama is super, super soft. Um, each of the, the hairs that make up the fibers, they're hollow like a straw. And what that does is that it creates air pockets inside the strand. And that is a form of insulation. And so what that does is you get a lighter weight fabric because it's full of air and it's warmer because of the air pockets. Those pockets of air help hold our body heat to us, um, help and help draw in the body or the, the atmosphere temperature and heat. Um, llama as a result too, because of the air pockets that are created in each fiber, it has a really, it has a really great ability to balance. So in the warm weather, it can, um, it's still going to be warm, but it has more um, multi weather abilities to it. It's um, much like sheep wool. It is uh, flame resistant, but just like sheep wool, if you get it in direct flame, it will burn. So does your hair, right? Because it is a, it is a type of hair. Um, but it will be heat resistant, which is fabulous as well. Um, it's, but it's even softer. This stuff is so soft. I love it. 
I just want to curl up inside it. This one right here, this is Llama Una. I just restocked on this and I have, they got 12 colors in stock now. Um, this is a really nice DK weight yarn. And this color right here is called Clove. And I'm gonna, I don't know if you can really see the color in here, but um, it's, it's really textural because llama fibers take color dye differently than sheep. Um, it's not as straightforward. So it, it, the colors will come in with a more of a heathered um, tones because the, some of the, the fibers in the llama don't take the color in the same way. And so you get these really great color textury things. Um, this is Lamour. This is another llama. And I don't, I don't know, if, again, if you can, maybe in this one, you can kind of see those heathered tones in there. It's just so, I love that about llama. It's not just a flat, straight color. It gets really um, heathery. Um, llama, llama lace, though, they do, um, when they, what they're doing with the llama lace is they're dyeing in the fleece. And then they're spinning it and they're pulling in other colors. Um, let's see here. Can you see in here? This is a lavender color. It, it, it show, seems on my screen like maybe it's showing up a little bit more blue than it actually is. But there are flecks of a dark, darker blue and a pink in here as well as a lavender color. And from a distance, when you hold it at arm's length, it, it lavender but when you actually get up and you kind of look at it you're like oh gosh there's some pink in there and there's some blue and some other things and llama has a really great ability to do that um, but it does take custom dye really well I want to show you a couple of examples of that we did this as a special um, yarn of the month project several years ago um, but this one um, was an inspiration it's called rebellious rhododendron rebellious roadie and it um was inspired from a photo i took of some rhododendrons and this pink is really beautiful um but even in this the colors have an, a really um an earthy undertone to them that your merinos don't always translate and i like that um, I love bright color. I really, really do. Um, but I also love the colors that have these earthy undertones to them. Um, and it, you can see in this one, here's a piece I've been crocheting up my, um, I have to, I've got this far and now I have to start over because I actually um, miscounted and it's, it's going to not work out the way that I wanted. <laughs> so that's okay. I get to work with it even more. But again, you can see in this one how the llama yarn kind of takes the color in some different ways. But while I have this out, the other thing I wanted to talk to you about in llama, a lot of people will say that llama sags or that it is not elastic and it doesn't pull back in the way that sheep's wool does. And that is true. Um it doesn't have uh, this, the, the hairs do not have the scales the way that sheep's wool does where they can really lock in and grip into each other. And they're there, but they're smaller and they're finer. And that's what gives llama its really silky um, texture that some varieties of sheep can do especially if you're getting an undercoat from it um, but llama has um, a very different has a different texture to it um, but this does not mean that your product project that you make is going to sag and droop out of shape um, where that comes in is in the way that the yarn is manufactured so this is llama lace, which is that purple one that I showed you over here. This yarn has a fairly tight twist to it. Let's see if I can get this up here. Can you see that? 
This has a pretty tight and consistent twist to it. That is going to add structure to the yarn. It also allows your allows for some stitch definition. And um, so you're not going to have to worry quite as much about losing your shape. And what the silky texture of the llama does is that it allows for your piece to have drape and movement. So this has... A really great, see how that moves? This in a sheep's wool doesn't do that. Um, if Even if I did the same thing in a cotton, it's not going to have that movement to it that you might want. That's not something you want for every project. But when you know you're looking for something that's going to really move with you, um, llama is a really good choice for that. I've also heard some people talk about... Um, about llama losing its shape, not holding its shape and structure. And I want to show you two examples of something. Um, this is my Oda cabled slouchy hat on a mannequin head, so it's not staying on there. <laughs> but this, I've worn this several times, and it is a slouchy hat, so it is meant to fit softer and looser anyway. But it has held its shape really, really well really well. I have not had, I wore it last winter. I wore it a lot. And so this is, um, this pattern, by the way, is available, um, on my website. Just look for Oda, O-D-A. And, um, it's just a beautiful, it's really beautiful. And I love it. Um, if you don't like it as tall and slouchy the way that this one is, um, you can just make it a little bit shorter and then it's not as slouchy. The other one I want to show you is um, the Guterin hat. We did this. This is another um, custom dye of the llama lace that we did a few years ago. Um, and look how well this is held up. I, this was from, I think, 2017 when I made this hat. And it's held its shape really, really well. This is another hat that... When it's not on display here in the shop, I do wear quite a bit. It doesn't have to be thick. This um, brim is two layers thick. It's a provisional cast on with a pearl row. And then you sort of, you do a three needle knit off over here to join them to make a folded brim. But look how that, it's not very thick, is it? And this is super super warm because of that higher thermal value with the llama. Okay. Um, so there you go. Those are some of my favorite things about llama. It's dreamy soft. It's super warm. Um, because llama does not naturally have, have oils or lanolin um, in their system and doesn't get on their fur uh, or their hair. Um, they are considered hypoallergenic, but I don't refer to them that way because I do have a few customers who can't deal with any animal fibers at all. And so I like to say that it's less allergenic. And But I hope you'll think about giving it a try. They're super soft. We have three different ones here in the shop currently. I'm always keeping my eye out for more and others. There's another on my radar screen. And I've got quite a few um, choices for alpaca in the shop, which is a cousin to llama. It has um, very, very, very similar qualities to it. Um, there are a few little differences, but I would say that the average person would not really detect a difference between an alpaca and a llama um, until they became really, really familiar with them. So I've got several alpaca blends in here as well that I think you would really, really love. So if you've got a project coming up, maybe you're thinking about those hats and those cowls and those scarves and those fingerless mitts as we transition into the colder weather. Tomorrow is the first day of fall, right? This is a great time of year to be knitting and crocheting those things. So that way, when the cold weather gets here, you already have your yummy, cozy, warm stuff ready for you to wear. So there you go. There's a few ideas, a few thoughts. If you have more questions that you would like me to answer, 
about yarn fibers, about techniques, about projects, um, about the yarn realm, you can pop over onto the website um, and go to the contact page and just fill out the little form there. And that will send me an email and I will do my best to answer your questions. Or you can hit me up over on Facebook on the Facebook page, which is just forward slash perfectly naughty on Facebook. And I'm also on Instagram. So hope to see you around social. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and um, pop over to the website, sign up for the newsletter so you can get notifications about different topics that we are going to be covering as we move into the fall season. And I thank you for your time today. And I love you guys. I thank you for your support. I really, I appreciate all of your support. Keeps me going every single day. So, all right, I'm going to let you go. Mwah! Love to you all. Have a great day.